Okay, right. So our first speaker is uh, Jim Nash. He does actually exist. He's not a cartoon character, I can assure you, because I actually saw him yesterday. Um, so Jim Nash from Tuscan Capital, who are in the bridging market. A uh, little bit about, well, first of all, you should receive this from me this morning. Um, and some of you might have actually received this. In fact, one of you won't receive it yet because you've actually registered up since I started. So I'll get this to you as soon as I finish speaking. Uh, so this would have come to you this morning. It's just a little bit of detail about what they do. It's simple one page because their product is relatively simple. So, Jim, are you there, by the way? Because I can see you're actually going as a, as a presenter, but you don't appear to have your camera and um, speaker on as yet. Um, so a little bit about Jim, industry veteran, many years standing, experienced firsthand all the ups and downs of recent and not so recent financial services history. The majority of Jim's experience has been gained in broker-facing sales roles, including time spent at national with National Mortgage Bank, non-conforming lenders, iGroup and Money Partners, and bridging provider Omni Capital. And he's also done a bit of broken in this time too. He's a dedicated follower of the bridging industry, Spurs, Golf and Guinness, but not necessarily in that order of priority. I know which is the first in that priority and it's the one that begins with g with a capital yeah. and not g with a lowercase uh jim can you hear us by the way i've just seen you appear. i can marvelous can right okay. jim was at the bridge and commercial awards yesterday but he's looking very sprightly um, <laughs> i want to go jim, as far as that tony jim is known in our office as mr 24 7 because that's the times we're able to contact him so i'm looking forward to actually speaking to him on christmas day this year um just as he's tucking into his food uh, about a potential bridging case but uh, no he's always available i'd say saw him yesterday uh, and i'll cover actually a little bit about what we actually spoke about yesterday once he's done his bit a little bit about jim jim was once on tv in a choir and sang with an old group called the beverly sisters and the program was stars on sunday i was actually going to write in there put in there that it was in the mid 50s but uh, i thought that was yeah, probably unfair. Jim's only, i think about two three years older than i am uh, he was however only allowed to join the choir if he promised not to sing True. Now, I, I also think he probably wasn't there for his looks either. But anyway, that's another story. But um, that's true as well. <laughs> right. So this is the, this is a new one on us. So please bear with us if this goes wrong, um, because we'll just we'll stop doing it. But this should work. I'm told by my IT department it will work. So a brief video, and I now have to actually put this up. So yeah, you just bear me one second. This is Tuscan Capital the Property Finance Specialists, a proposition which stands out from the crowd. The Tuscan Capital proposition gives you direct access to decision makers, fast turnaround times, a proactive attitude. Tuscan Capital's mission. Our mission is to win repeat custom through integrity, flexibility and understanding. For all types of property funding, both inside the box for straightforward situations or outside the box where things are more complicated. For deals that are inside the box, we can offer highly competitive pricing and a straightforward process. For deals outside the box, our experienced team will provide a common sense solution that you can rely on. Our products. Bridging finance for fast capital raising. Auction funding, where certainty is needed to fund a quick acquisition refinancing of existing debt or where a developer needs more time to sell, refurbishment funding to both acquire the property and fully fund the costs of the project, HMO funding for both the purchase and the costs of conversion and refurbishment, funding for buy-to-let landlords who might need to capital raise or restructure their portfolio, our terms of business from 0.69 per month, from 3 to 24 months, from 150,000 to 10 million with no exit fees or nasty surprises. Simple, transparent lending. We've put together a really strong team with great property lending experience, which means we can offer a common sense lending proposition. We have worked hard to deliver a variety of committed funding lines to support our brokers and partners. I personally think that is a key part of what Tuscan has to offer. Here's what some of our broker partners say.
if you haven't already? Give us a try. Find us at tuscancapital.co.uk or call us on our regional numbers. Well, what can I say? A bit echoey, um, unfortunately. I've, I've not heard that before, by the way, because it wouldn't play on my computer yesterday. So, right. um, but uh, yeah, very good, Jim. Very professional. <laughs> I think that's. I think that's done the job now. So I can go now, can't I? Absolutely not. You've got some speaking to do. Don't, <laughs> don't use your headache as an excuse. Right. If, yeah. uh, I'm going to now leave you for 15 minutes whilst Jim talks about everything Tuscan. Uh, so I'll see you very shortly. Okay. Thanks, Tony. Right. Well, that video there is just give you a quick overview of the team. We're a fairly small team. There's only 11. But since that video, we've actually taken on two more people and we've opened up the offices in Manchester and Birmingham. So we've now got national coverage. Um, in front of you, I'll just go through quickly a bit of what was already shown, but let's just do a quick recap. As I say, our rates start from 0.69% per month. Term, we do have a minimum term of three months, as you can see there, we'll go up to 24 months. Loan to value, we actually, we work to the open market value, um, unlike some of our competitors, which obviously gives your clients a little bit more day one. Um, we will do fully retained interest, we'll do serviced, um, and obviously if it's serviced, we do look for proof, and we'll take a pragmatic view of what you're actually providing as proof. Um, we're looking for first and second charges. Um, we do look for consent from the first mortgagees. Facilities, we've increased our loan size now up to 10 million from it, before it was seven and a half, we're now up to 10 million. And we recently completed a deal for just a little bit over 10 million on a 130 property portfolio purchase off of a brewery. Um, all sorts of residential properties are considered, HMOs, your buy-to-lets, semi-commercials, as you can see there, we look at small blocks of flats. Um, at this moment in time, before somebody asks a question, fully commercial, unless it has residential planning, at this moment in time, we're not able to fund that. So we're talking to some people now and hopefully we'll be back into that market very soon. We'll consider foreign nationals. Um, everything is down to obviously your, your KYC to know your, your, your clients. Um, we'll look at PEPs. Um, th there's a certain level of PEP. So we'll look at, um, as, as long as it's not, say, the one we get all the time, which is, the, I think it's the son of the Pakistani um, minister. It comes across that desk numerous times, but really is a pep so we wouldn't deal with that but deal with all sorts of spvs offshore limited companies um we'll take a view what's always handy is that you actually and we can supply this to help you is that before you do submit a deal for a limited company or an offshore that's got a complicated structure you have to find your way back to the ultimate beneficial owner um, and we've got a, a, a table that we can provide you with that just say, like, fill in here. If this is here, go to here, fill in the name of this person, these directors, is that another company? Go to that director. So we help you get to what needs to be supplied when you sub when you actually submit the deal. Because numerous times we'll get a deal come in, it'll be an SPV, and we'll say, what's the structure? And it'll be, right, how do I deal with that? We, we can help you with that. Um, so... We will provide, say here, in, inside 24 hours, we're, we'll supply an approved, a credit approved credit sheet. Because again, we're such a small company, it's as simple as, if it's something that can't answer straight away, we, we have to have some input from the CEO or the finance director, we can do that on the back of a phone call. They'll look at the deal and say, yep, that's it. And we can issue credit approved terms. And going back to what Tony was saying earlier, we actually do show the prop fees that are show that are paid to the introducers because we didn't want to fall foul, foul of um, hidden commissions, and it is obviously shown on the offer as well. Um, so, just I'm going to flick down here, hopefully, to take us onto the next screen. Okay, something that we are involved in an awful lot at the moment is development exit bridges. Um, 
there's a screen missing here, but it doesn't matter. Let's just focus on this one at the moment. It's one which we completed recently. Um, the client is, a, as it says here, is a high spec apartments in Harrow above some commercials, actually a pharmacist uh, on, on, on the bottom floor. Um, but they required the money quickly because they had another development which had been agreed by another lender but they needed the deposit monies to put into it. So they needed to repay the money on here. They had two private firms in on the loan in the first place. They needed to be repaid and we had to raise the, the equity for them to put into, the, into their new deal so that they could get cracking. And they were up against a time limit on that one as well. So on here, we, we took this view that because one of the flats had actually been sold. And in fact, a second one was sold. It gave a really good indication of the sale price and the open market value was being achieved. And then there was another site, which was, as you can see here in Hemel Hempstead, where one of the properties had also been sold. So again, we had a good idea as to what the actual price was being achieved. And on that basis, we took the loan up to, as you can see here, 72.5% loan to value. Uh, normally on development exits, the market normally says 65, maybe 70. But we took, as I said, this view that because there was evidence, recent evidence, we were able to go higher. Um, the loan was also completed. It, it was something where there was a lot of hand-holding going on. Uh, and this is one where I've got to say this was a 24-7 deal where we had to work so closely with the client. We had a Section 106 agreement which needed to be agreed with us, had to be agreed with a, a, another company who actually were taking apartments off of them to help with shared ownership, etc. We had the council and it had to be parted to the Section 106, obviously. But with the pandemic, we just couldn't get hold of anybody to actually sign the paperwork. So eventually what we managed to do was to get the council to agree in principle, yes, they agreed to everything. To another party, they agreed to everything. The client agreed and us to agree. And we exchanged emails to say that, yes, this will be agreed, or that it hadn't been signed. So we made that what you call a, a condition subsequent. Um, and there were other conditions as well. You know, there was landscaping that needed to be done. There was some cladding on an adjoining uh, building. So, but we we took the view, we were very pragmatic about it. And as you can see, we lent them five and a half million across both sites um, and successfully. And I know already that the deal that he was looking to complete with this other lender has now completed as well. So yes, a very happy customer there. Let's move down. Okay, this is um, another one where we took a pragmatic view. It's another development exit. Um, and there was a small amount of work left to be done. There was circa, I think it was about £5,000 left to be done on the houses to finish them off. But they were pretty much at PC. However, they needed another £80,000 to finish off the landscape and again outside. Um, they needed to move quickly. Again, we, it came in at 72.5% uh, loan to value on here, but there was a there was good market um, knowledge available that suggested that those prices were going to be achieved. Again, something which we turned around very quickly. So, so I'm missing, for some reason, there's some slides that I'm missing, um, which is... Ah, oh, here we go. No, I've got one of them back. Um, this here, to be honest with you, just highlights the number of cases through all around the country, which shows our coverage, because we're England and Wales. We're not Scotland yet. We're looking at that at the moment. Um, and we're not Northern Ireland. Uh, the, the market in Northern Ireland, we feel, is a little bit limited, but there is definitely a market in Scotland, in obviously the key areas, your Edinburgh, your Glasgow's, which we're looking at at the moment. I'm not going to go through all of these cases, but just giving you an idea, um, the, the one in Bury, it had reached PC, um, and so we just literally gave a, a facility which allowed them time to prove the income, which will then allow them to refinance that onto a term facility. Um, 
again, there's very, I won't go through all of them. Liverpool, fairly small deal in Liverpool, um, provided 70% of the purchase price, 100% of the conversion costs. Um, and it was completed, this was a conversion to flats, it was completed under permitted development. And it's something which we are heavily into at the moment, which is to non-performing assets to get them to change into performing assets, i.e. a HMO, for instance. If you've got your permission to change something into a HMO, whether or not it's to increase the size of that HMO, increase the numbers, buy permission in place to convert to a HMO, we love looking at those deals. We'll provide 100% of the actual bill costs. We work to 65% of the GDV, which very rarely does that cause a problem because enhanced value is always reflected in the GDV. And we're in a 70% day one towards purchase price. So we'll, we'll cover 100% of the bill costs. If there is any cost overrun, which I had one on one recently, um, which there was a discrepancy between what the surveyor thought it was going to cost them. They felt they had their costings right. So we said, well, look, if the surveyor's correct, you're going to have to cover those costs. And they said, well, we can prove we can we can do it, but we're not going to have to do it. So we said, just show that you've got the money to do it, which they did. So they've shown that. We've given them the facility. If it overruns, then yes, they have got the money to, to cover any overrun. Um, and that's a facility which is going very nicely at the moment. We're just onto the second drawdown. We, we do work to a QS. We'll go back out and check that they've done the work. Obviously, the money is then paid in arrears. Um, and it's a great uh, facility that we're offering because HMOs in good city centres, uh, and I'd say even more so up north, are achieving a terrific re yield of anywhere 10% upwards, which obviously in London, you, you wouldn't achieve that. So that, that's a product which is flying out the door at the moment with us. Okay. Let me see how else we've got this. Okay, that's the property. The slides in a slightly... Okay, to be honest with you, that, that just gives you an idea because there appears to be one slide that I am missing from here, which gave a summary, but never mind. Uh, let me just see. Was it there? Let's see. Okay, I can't actually get back to it, Tony. Jim, that's your that's lot. lot. The only slide you had in that... Um... Yeah. Uh, was actually with, with your telephone number and contact details. So I think okay, no, very, listen, no, no problem, Tony. There was just a quick summary there that once again just really showed the rates from 0.69 that will go the the, the loan sizes from 150,000 to 10 million. The nationwide coverage, not in Scotland, England, and Wales. Um, we're not into a postcode lottery. We will lend it in any area. The only time where I've got to say postcodes are of interest is that if a deal is presented and it is, look, this property is going to be worth a million pounds, let's just say, when it's been finished. And then the surveyor looks at it or we look at it and we say, hang on, that property in that postcode is more than 300% of the average value of properties in that area, then we will restrict our lending because the selling of a million pound property right in the middle of properties that are going for 150,000 pounds is so unique that you're not going to you're not going to sell it for a million pounds so that's just something where I so said we don't take any notice of postcodes or the area at all they're all treated the same unless it's a property that is so as 300% more than the value, average value of properties in that area and then we'll have to take a view on it um besides that open to any yeah, questions? We've got one question. There's another one just being typed now. So um, Paul Holman has asked, what is the range of, of LTVs you accept? So when you say the range of LTVs, we'll go up to 75% of the open market value on purchases. So, and there are cases where when you just saw there on refinance, we went to 72.5% on a development exit. We will go to, if it's purchase at undervalue, then you're looking at 85% of the purchase price, as long as it doesn't exceed the loan to value of the maximum of 75%. Um, something else actually that, again, 
are getting very well with all of our competitors. There's room in the market for everybody. But where we sometimes still a march with some of our competitors is, as an example, a real life example at the moment, I actually know the figures in my head, a purchase of a property for 1.775 million. But the guy purchased it under an option a year ago and he purchased it for 1.425 million. We will go to, in, in, in this instance, we, again, we'll go to what, what he actually needs is he needs 70% of the value of the property. Our competitors, I'm not saying everybody, but there's two competitors who won't go to more than 65% of the loan to value of that property because that person and now applicant does not own any other assets. This is the only asset that he will own. We we don't make that a prerequisite. We don't say you've got to own this, this and this to be able to buy this. So although this is his only purchase under an option, which is exercise, and as they were going ahead with, we're fine with that. So we we have on this one, we worked it to 70% of value, which worked out, I can't remember exactly, I'll be honest with you, the actual value against purchase price. It was around about 75%, I think it was in the end. Um, so yeah, some of the exercise is an option. Um, the guy is, actually, as, as it happens now, the guy is actually selling it. He's absolutely kicking himself that he allowed the option to be exercised. But, and we're completing that. And it's on a specific date as well of the 4th of November that will be completed. So, yeah, that's something that we look at. So the ranges are, as I say, 75% on, on a purchase. If it's a semi-commercial, then you're talking 70%. And for semi-commercial, we can be quite liberal with what is commercial and what is the residential part of it a 50 50 split is, is acceptable uh, a 60 percent uh, commercial 40 percent residential is also acceptable but we we max out at 70 percent on that okay um alexander's asked how much of the development costs do you consider right remembering as i said we will do 100 percent, but let me just make it clear here we will not do ground up developments okay so but we would do a heavy refurb you know we, we've got one at the moment which was a buddhist center which has been now at scott planning for ready into flats we've done a police station with uh, permission to convert again into flats and they both work out at 70 percent of the purchase price and we do 100 percent of the refurbishment but it's heavy refurbishment costs okay so uh, going, going on to the questions that you you set yourself, so here's, here's your big test, Jim. Um, which I asset classes them. will you lend on? I think you've just actually answered that. But uh, yeah, I have. Yeah, right. look, and any asset as long as it's got resi planning. Fine. Okay. Um, will you lend to? I think you've answered this one as well during the presentation. Will you lend to offshore companies and foreign nationals? That's right. And as I said before, we can help you with going through the structure. Now we've actually got a sheet of paper that comes out to you and says, right. Go here, tick, is it this? Yes, drop down box. So we make that very easy for you when you're presenting the case to us. Okay. Um, as, as we all know, and delegates I'm talking to now, as we all know, there are so many bridging lenders in the market at the moment. We could probably, if we wanted to, we could all have a panel of 500 lenders increasing yeah. on pretty much a daily basis. Uh, why are Tuscan different? Well, it's it's one of those old things, like something I'm going to be talking about with us a little bit later on. It's about the people um, because if they are pretty unique. You've got your big bank but uh, bank lenders out there who are very sort of like regimented in what they'll do and it's very much you're ticking boxes you've got some entrance into the bridging market you probably shouldn't be in the first place uh let's, let's be frank because they really don't know what they're doing there's some of the peer-to-peer -peer lenders out there who really probably won't be around much longer uh what's different about tuscan well jim's been in the market since the year dot uh, probably yeah. in the 1950s um, I was with them yesterday because with Swiss and clients for a very, very, very unusual deal. I've never seen anything like it in the 38 years I've been doing this now, uh, um, which has now been agreed in principle. And this was has been turned down by literally every lender in the market because they couldn't get their head around it. No other reason that they could not get they could not get to grips with a deal of that complexity. Hmm. Um, and it's now been agreed in principle, as I say. Colin Sanders, who's the CEO, um, was at one stage the CEO of iGroup back in the 90s and the 2000s. Uh, he was CEO of Money Partners. He's CEO of Omni Capital Partners, which was backed by the Candy Brothers. This guy has been a, a real high flyer for many, many, many years. And he's now sitting there running a company of 11, 12, 13 people uh, and just 
working out deals to be done because of the level of experience he's got he will make deals he, he will get deals done that others are saying don't understand that because of his level of expertise and nothing more than that it's it's as a lender they're fantastic to have on board because you can actually turn a decline into like we've had into an accept and this decline that we've had which is now potentially an accept subject to valuation yeah is couldn't be anything possibly up to about five million quid's worth of borrowing yeah absolutely um, so that, that's why I, I can't stress enough if i mean we have package status with tuscan as well so you could go direct but you don't know jim the way i do you don't know colin the way i do uh you don't know john who's the one of the main underwriters the way i do because i employed him for 18 yeah. months about i think he left me about eight years ago but he missed the lending market so he went back into it that's who we're dealing with we're dealing with people. i don't class these people as industry colleagues i class them as friends yeah it's quite it's as simple as that so i can have conversations with them that i can't have with some other bridging lenders who've just come into the market and probably will go out the market as quickly um when things don't even need to turn sour when they have problems with their funding tuscan don't have problems with funding believe me absolutely no way whatsoever jim we're actually done on your bit i've got no more questions for you that's fine if thank you very much been, Tony. although someone is typing something so we might just wait if you would like to maybe just like reminisce and sing us that song back from the Beverly Sisters in the <laughs> 1950s, just, just to pass a bit of time, just while someone's well, typing, please feel free to do so. No, I, I won't do that. But it was quite funny when they one of them did turn around at the end when I was on, you know, Stars on Sunday and said, oh, that was lovely. And I was thinking, if only you knew love. I didn't say, sing a single word at all, you know, <laughs> but, you know, but you know the story as to why I was in the, in the choir I was able to travel to Italy and it, and it was great fun. And again, for those, I was singing for the Pope, but again, I wasn't allowed to sing for the Pope. You're singing again. for the Pope, blimey. Yeah, I uh, for the Mike, Pope. Mike Kerr has just asked a question. Hi, Mike, how are you? Hope you're well. Uh, are yeah. client fees the same, whether whether through you or direct? I'll answer that one, Jim. Absolutely. No difference yeah. whatsoever. Absolutely. Uh, there's no changes whatsoever. Same product. It's just that you've got not just the benefit of a lender that is uh obviously out there to write business and will write business that others won't and i don't mean they'll just take the crap out of us one i mean they're actually writing they're actually finding solutions for business that should that for deals that should be done yeah um but exactly the same they're just paying us a little bit more because we've got our expertise and i've got some photographs of jim and colin that they don't want exactly. to be back so, um <laughs> always works that's not true by the way yeah, yeah. that's not true Jim, we've got no more questions. So okay. um, you can go back to bed because you were at the, the Bridge and Commercial Awards last night. I know you were. I, I understand you were very good and, and didn't touch a drop of alcohol all day. I'm still married, Tony, just by the skin of my teeth when I got in. She's in the background listening because obviously I'm working from home. But yes, I can, we you can, know we can. what? It, it, it was it, it wasn't too bad a night, but I am I will be signing off because I'm going on holiday tomorrow. So I'm going to go from here and start packing. And All it's right. good to see you're still in the same room as where you slept last night when you got home, which is good. At the, <laughs> yeah. 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 Excellent. Jim, have All a good right. holiday. I'll probably speak to you later on, but have a good holiday. And, yeah, um, we'll do. We'll, Thanks, uh, folks. We'll soon. Right, so on to our next speaker, a little bit of a, a, a quick pause. Jim, don't log out. We'll log you out. Don't worry. Don't you just down the whole thing. Okay. That has happened before, by the way. <laughs> um, not from Jim. So our next speaker, um, we have... Uh, Jonathan Prince, Alica Bank, um, who we came on board with Alica Bank uh, just at the start of lockdown last year. Obviously, didn't get to meet anybody from Alica. Uh, knew a couple of people there from other organisations. Uh, Jonathan was one of our first contacts. Um, we started placing quite a bit of business with them. And we actually met Jonathan for the first time, uh, I think it was about 10 days ago, two weeks, can't remember what it was. But um, yeah, he's, he's still in the less than 10 people that have been out to see us since lockdown finished so uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure he was probably quite glad to get out so uh, jonathan can you hear us you can, i can indeed you hear me? okay this is one to listen to people by the way um I, I, well, I say it's very lend but, but believe me this one really is one to listen to uh because this is some stuff in this that others aren't doing at this moment in time so a little bit first of all uh about alica but also you've received this by email this morning and i think i'm up to date everybody's now got their Oh, no, one person's actually registered uh, about five minutes ago, so I'll, I'll cover that one uh, it, once I've finished. Uh, yeah, so you should receive this three-page document regarding their product offering. Uh, would have come over a short while ago. Uh, a little bit about Jonathan, first of all. He's been working in commercial finance for the last eight years, and all of that time has been spent with small challenger banks. 
uh, largely worked in credit functions, giving him a strong understanding of business risk and moved into relationship management at the start of the year. Can't stress how important that is. You've got somebody that has actually been at the sharp end and knows what a deal is. I mean, I was very fortunate enough to be able to do that when I was working for Cedar Holdings all those years ago. You know, I was an underwriter for, I think it was about three years, and then was put out on the road. And the benefit that gave me over my colleagues who'd never had that experience was massive. Because let's face it, when you get a BDM or somebody coming into your office to visit you, uh, you don't want to be talking about cricket. You want to be talking about what deals you can get through them. Uh, so it's a major, major advantage. And when Jonathan came in a couple of weeks ago, there was one particular deal that was getting a bit sticky, and we found a resolution that day to that, and that is now proceeding the way it should do. I think it's been offered. It's now proceeding uh, the, the way that uh, the, pretty much the way the client wants, and uh, so we're going to get another completion. So uh, he joined. Hang on. That's not <laughs> yeah. slide. That's not you. Hang on a minute. What? I have no idea why that has come up. That is the weirdest thing ever. So... Right, let's ignore that. Interesting fact, uh, Jonathan has moved house 26 times in 31 years. I believe that might have, is that increased? Is that now 27? It's, it's now 27, yeah, I'm right, saying. So 27, 27 times in possibly 32 years. Uh, we understand it's not a stamp duty fetish or anything of that <laughs> nature. Uh, it's just, there are various reasons behind that. I won't ask him to go through it, but uh, 27 times, blimey. Yeah, it'd take uh, longer than the 20 minutes I've got to talk through. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah <laughs> I, I couldn't do that. I'd, I'd, I'd be divorced several times over if that was me anyway. Right, so it's uh, over to you, Jonathan. I'll see you in about 20 minutes and try and work out why a slide for another lender has actually appeared in the middle of yours. So I have no idea. Thanks, it's adult technology. Thanks Tony. Um, morning, everyone. Um, it's uh, nice to, to be talking to you following yesterday's awards as uh, the freshly minted BNC Commercial Lender of the Year. Um, I was thankful not to be at the awards last night, or at least I was thankful this morning when I woke up, um, particularly having uh, had a, a Zoom call with a couple of my colleagues this morning. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely better off than they are. Um, so what I'm going to talk you through today is a little bit about, the, uh, about Alica Bank and who we are. Um, a little bit about our offering um, and then I've got some case studies to run through which just give you a flavour of some of the, the real life deals that we're doing. Um, I find that talking through your products all well and good um, but it, it really helps to add some colour to the picture uh, to go through some real deals. Um, so diving straight in, Alica Bank are a, a bespoke SME bank. Um, we have been running just over two years now um, and we were founded by a, a private equity fund who, who saw a gap in the market really for trading SMEs. Um, a lot of these small businesses that are being turned away by the high street um, don't have many other options. There's a, a lot of competitors in our space uh, that, that you know, focus on being SME champions. Um, but actually what you find with a lot of them is they're buy-to-let lenders. Um, and we, we saw that gap and, and thought there's a real opportunity here for uh, a true commercial bank um, where, you know, somebody's gone to the, the main five or six household names, uh, not had options available to them, um, and where they were previously staring down the barrel of, a, of an interest rate starting with a six or a seven, uh, we launched to, to try and fill that gap. Um, the plan for us as a bank is, is in essence, to become a, a full-service SME bank. So as we sit today, we're a, a commercial mortgage uh, and asset finance lender, um, but we're looking at growing that product offering out um, to cover all this range of things here. So we'll be launching our current account to SMEs next year. Um, and along with that, you get all the facilities that you'd expect from a business lender. Um, so invoice finance and discounting, overdraft and business loans, credit cards, uh, and all those sorts of functionalities that uh, an SME needs from their, their main banking provider. Um, I very much work on the, the commercial mortgage side of the business, so that's what I'm going to be, be focusing on today. So Alka's proposition to the introducer market is built around three core values. Um, and, and these really are, are, are things that we live by in terms of how we do our business. So the most important one for me there is straightforward. Uh, you know, we don't beat around the bush. We, we get to the point and we tell you exactly what we can or can't do day one. Um, and we follow through on that. Uh, you know, if I, I'm 
pretty confident that if I have a conversation with an introducer about a deal, the terms that I suggest to them and the issues that we overcome in that conversation are exactly the terms that will follow through the underwriting stage and then on to, into that customer offer. Um, and that's where the integrity comes in as well, really, you know, making sure that we're not doing the uh, the BDM bit of, of talking a good game and then it gets into credit and a completely different deal comes out. Um, you know, we, we will have the, the conversations that we need to on day one to make sure that the terms we're giving are the terms that that client will end up with to give you guys as introducers the confidence that, yes, it might only be an indicative terms email, but actually we're going to be very close to that on, on real offer, if not exactly there. Um, and collaboration is, is again, it's about that, that initial forming and shaping of a deal um, and working with you and your clients to, to get a solution that works rather than imposing terms that just don't work for a customer uh, and therefore as you as introducers uh, are left having to, to explain an offering that isn't what you thought it was going to be. So moving into the products, our, our broad terms are standard across the two products. So our, our two main uh, things we split our mortgages down into are commercial owner occupiers um, so that's somebody that is trading from the property that uh, we're looking to secure the mortgage against um, and commercial and semi-commercial investment, uh, obviously for uh, commercial landlords. For borrower types, we allow limited companies, LLPs, partnerships and sole traders. Um, and we can also cater for new codes not yet incorporated. So where you've got an individual that's perhaps looking to set up an SPV for a property purchase haven't quite got the finer points of the company sorted out, but want to, to get an offer of lending on the table, uh, we're more than comfortable with those. Um, loan sizes range from 150,000 up to 5 million um, and are based against uh, an LTV percentage of the property and I'll come on to those shortly. Um, for our term, we are committed term lenders. So our term of five to 25 years is not just a, an amortization profile, that is the, our commitment to that customer. So customer takes out a 25 year deal with us today, they can guarantee that they have that facility available to them for 25 years. We're not gonna ask them to, to refinance it away after a three or five year period or, or pay new product fees to, to renew that, that loan. Um, everything we do is secured above Bank of England base rate, and that is the, the, the true bank base rate. It's not our own version of it. Um, so at the moment, all of our margins are, are plus the 0.1% that the, the Bank of England publish. Um, our approach to security is one of the things that, that really does make us quite different. Um, like I say, we're, we're very much focused on the SME and the business. Um, so for us, that is what we're underwriting against. So the only thing we are taking as standard on every deal that we do is that first legal charge um, against a freehold or leasehold property. Anything ancillary to that is very much case by case. Um, so debentures, personal guarantees, we're not putting 100% personal guarantee on every case just because it's a limited company. It's very much as and when required. Um, so in the introduction, Tony referred to a case uh, where a, a customer was looking to tweak some terms. Um, he wanted a, a, a debenture removing um, that we were going to take over. It was a, a situation where we had an operating company and a separate company that owned the property. Didn't want to give the debenture over the trading business, um, so we negotiated a, a very small PG in, in exchange for that, um, and the customer ended up with the, the terms that he wanted. Um, and that just shows the flexibility that we can have around uh, around the security of the deal. Early repayment charges are in place for the first five years, um, 3%, and the customer is free to make 10% overpayments each year. Um, at the end of five years, those ERCs disappear completely. Um, so the remaining 20 years of the loan, the customer can choose at any point that they want to either sell that property or refinance away, uh, and, and they won't incur a penalty for doing so. So moving on to some of the <clears throat> more specific uh, product criteria. Um, so our owner-occupied mortgages are offered on a capital and interest basis, where we do allow the first two years of uh, an owner-occupied loan to be on an interest-only basis. So 
for a 25 year term, you could have the first two years interest only and the following 23 years amortizing. Um, that is all, again, one facility. There's no switch fees or product fees at the end of that two year period. Um, it's, it's something that we're finding is particularly useful for, uh, at the moment, particularly businesses in, uh, say, the hospitality sector that have been particularly affected over the last 18 months by uh, the events that have gone on. Um, and they just need a little bit of time to, to rebalance the books from a cash perspective, um, but equally want to take advantage of an opportunity to perhaps purchase the property they're trading from. That two year interest only period has been really invaluable to some of those customers. Um, the margin range uh, is anywhere between 4.55 and 5.85. Um, and that really depends on two key factors. The first of those is uh, the loan to value. So the lower amount against the property you want to borrow, the lower the rate will be. Um, and the second factor there is the credit grade of the business we're lending to. So that gives you the confidence that if you've got a, a real grade A customer uh, coming to you, they're going to benefit from the absolute best of our pricing uh, compared to those that are sort of average or, or higher risk profile. Debt service cover, again, is something we keep very simple. It's a straight 130%. Um, we do use an notional base rate of 0.75 just because we feel at the moment that uh, obviously the, the bank rate is extremely low, um, but there's no stress testing in there. There's no uh, unusual adjustments. It's just a straight 130. Moving on to the investment products, um, so for commercial and semi-commercial loans, uh, we offer either capital and interest up to 25 years or interest only up to 10 years. Uh, and there is no change to loan terms across those two products. So if your customer would qualify for a 25 year amortizing loan, they can have that loan on the exact same terms, but on a 10 year interest only. We don't drop LTVs or increase rates or fees or anything like that. Um, margin range for commercial uh, is between 5 and 6.3. Um, that is solely based on LTV. Uh, for investors, we don't tend to take into account the, the Experian business risk score. Um, main reason being a lot of investors use SPVs uh, and the information you get about business financials is so limited uh, that it would hinder more than help more customers. Um, and again, debt service cover we keep very simple. It's a straightforward 135%. Um, that's on a gross rent, no net rent deductions. Um, and again, we're not doing any stress testing. We're just quite simply using a base rate of 0.75 in that calculation. The one thing we do ask is that if the loan is on an interest only profile, it would still demonstrate full repayment cover over an amortizing loan, just to ensure that that could be refinanced away uh, at the end of the term if, if that's all the customers need. Um, and then at that table at the bottom there is our semi-commercial rates. Um, these fall into to two categories, in essence, depending on whether the property is predominantly commercial or predominantly residential. If that property is predominantly residential, uh, your rate will either be 4.5 or 4.8 over base. Uh, up to 60% LTV or sorry up to 4.5 up to 60% LTV or 4.8 above it and if it's less than 50% residential it will either be 4.95 or 5.55 again depending on where that LTV sits. So talking of the LTVs um, this table here shows where we will go up to for, for each individual property type um, these are maximums. It's important to stress that, you know, not every case, you know, if, it, if a property looks particularly run down or there are peer issues, we wouldn't always guarantee that you would be at the top of that range. Um, but for majority of our cases, these, these LTVs are available on the property types. Um, all of our lending is done against a straightforward vacant possession value. We don't use 180 day or restricted marketing periods or anything like that. Um, it, is, it is purely a straight VP value. Um, and as you can see from this table, we range anywhere from 70, uh, usually down to 65, but 60% for purpose-built student accommodation. Um, you will notice that there's no pure residential property in here, either buy to lets or HMOs. Um, as I said at the beginning, we are very much a commercial lender. 
um, and we don't consider any pure residential assets. Um, we are looking at our rates, uh, so one thing you will notice here is that we've got some uh, some slight caveats around office and uh, retail. Uh, obviously, for what's been going on in the last 18 months, those are the two sectors that have been the most affected. Um, but we are currently reviewing these and, and looking at getting them back up to our previous level of, of just a straightforward 70%. Um, because we feel that a lot of the effects on values in the property market in those two sectors have now worked their way through. Um, the property types you see at the bottom are those where there's inherent goodwill included in the property value, um, and we will lend against that goodwill if we're lending to the trading business, so on an owner-occupied basis, um, and that will always be up to 65 or 60% of market value. Uh, just with a check back to 70 or 80 percent of vacant possession value. Um, the one thing that's not covered in this presentation that we that we are able to offer is is lending on owner occupied care homes for elderly and dementia care. Um, that is something I would very much encourage you to get in touch with the specialist team about. Um, it's it's not a, a product that we offer directly. It is only available through through brokers. Um, and I would very much encourage you to, to speak to, to Tony or your contact in the team uh, about any care home lending because that is something we can help with um, up to 70% of the market value of the property or 120% of the bricks and mortar value. Um, so as important as it is to cover where we will lend, it's also very much worth calling out where we won't. Um, so these are the sectors that we don't currently have any appetite for. You've got your usual suspects in here of arms and weapons, gambling, adult entertainment, so on and so forth. Um, and as a bank, we don't have uh, an appetite for uh, any religious buildings or nightclubs. Um, care homes, like I say, we will lend on elderly and dementia care, but we won't lend on any specialist daycare facilities, children homes, uh, anything where there's more complex medical needs or anything like that. Um, and we don't do anything in that residential sector, including park homes or caravan parks. But as it says in there, if, if you've got any queries, um, get in touch with, with Tony and the team. They very much know our criteria and we'll be able to advise you on that. So moving on to the case studies, um, I'll, I'll whistle through these quite quickly because I'm conscious I'm, uh, I'm, I'm running out of time a little bit. Um, so this first case here is a, a purchase of a trading pub uh, down in Devon. Um, the two applicants used to be the previous owners and managers of the pub, but looking to, to step back into, into more of a, an investment capacity. Um, Despite them having no investment experience, the LTV they wanted was really modest, um, and you know they 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 knew the hospitality industry backwards. Um, so we we lent to them despite no no direct experience. Um, we managed to to agree a loan to them uh, on on that investment basis. Um, on to the second one, uh, this was uh, an applicant that was looking to purchase a property that they already traded from. Um, it was owned 50-50 by our borrower and an unrelated individual. Um, so we actually looked at this on an investment basis rather than owner-occupied because the third party didn't want to be involved in our loan. Um, and obviously the usual security therefore that we would take from a trading business wasn't available. Um, so being able to have that flexibility to look at this on an investment basis gave us the, the, the ability to do a deal where perhaps we wouldn't have been able to or another lender uh, would turn it down because they can't get the, the look through to that trading business. Um, this was one we drew down on actually uh, during lockdown number three. Um, where the business had been, apart from 18, uh, 18 weeks, I believe, uh, had been fully closed, offering a takeaway service. Um, but we'd seen that it was a really strong business before the pandemic uh, and was, was making a very good effort on the takeaway offering. Um, so despite everything that was going on in the hospitality sector, this was a case that we actually still managed to complete on uh, mid-pandemic. This third one is a very straightforward uh, 
experienced property investor just simply looking to add another property to his portfolio um, because of his experience we had no qualms going straight up to 70 percent ltv um, unfortunately for him our pricing has changed since and that would have now been slightly cheaper uh, we would have done that now at 5.75 over base rate rather than 5.95 um, no additional security taken there, so no personal guarantees or, or anything like that. Just a straightforward legal charge over the property. Um, this fourth one is a case where the applicants were looking to sell their trading business um, in the medical supplies industry, um, but they actually wanted to retain the property where it traded from um, on, a, on an investment basis uh, following the sale to the new individuals. Um, again, first time investors here, but because we had the benefit of being able to see the accounts for that business and the strength of it, um, the, the introducer was able to reassure us on the, on the quality of the individuals coming in to purchase that business. Um, we, were, we were more than comfortable to, to progress there. We did take a personal guarantee and that was purely to mitigate the fact that these guys had no experience uh, of property investment um, and also because they were relinquishing control of the trading business whilst we could see it had done fantastically before that personal guarantee just mitigated any risk there that uh, that the performance of the business did start to slip the fifth case study we've got here was uh, a loan of 1.2 million um, and this was a really interesting deal. So it was a, it was a hotel and a cocktail bar down on the South Coast um, being purchased by an individual that actually had no hospitality experience whatsoever. Um, he was a, a, a very big name in the security industry and had done very, very well for himself, had a very, very successful security business. Um, and he wanted to, to diversify into other assets to, to try and mitigate his risk. Um, where we got comfortable here, he was bringing in some very experienced individuals to run the businesses for him, um, and he did offer us a guarantee from his, uh, his, his main business, which, like I say, was performing very well. Um, but despite him being a first-time hospitality owner, again, this was one that was uh, approved and drew, drew down uh, whilst the property was closed due to restrictions, um, and that was a loan that we actually managed to complete in, in just under three months. Uh, from the initial inquiry to the money going out the door. Um, On to our sixth case study. Uh, this was uh, a, a closed pub, former pub, um, up in the Lake District um, that had shut prior to the pandemic, been closed for the, the 18 months through it. Um, and we had an individual who was a vastly experienced publican uh, and hospitality manager. Um, he has a portfolio in excess of 20 million of both investment and owner occupied pubs and hotels. Um, and he wanted to purchase this. He saw the opportunity with the location to create a real destination B&B, um, which he was planning on running himself. And then he was going to let the front of the property out to uh, a separate company to run the bar pub element. Um, we had no track record on this one, no financials available from prior to uh, the closure, um, and it was a it was a closed startup business. But what we had seen was a CV uh, from this individual that demonstrated a clear ability to take a property like this from zero to a very successful business in a very short space of time. Um, again, this is one where we did take a small personal guarantee to, to mitigate the fact that there was no repayment on day one. Um, and I'm very pleased to say that this case drew down about six months ago. Um, I've actually been up to, to visit the property recently. It's now absolutely booming. Um, and he's turning over close to double what he was forecasting uh, for any point during his first year. So a, a really strong little business there. Um, and this last case study was a purchase of a, a small industrial estate um, where a, a business was looking to expand their current space. They were in a very small unit um, and they saw the opportunity to buy this where they only actually wanted to trade from, from one part of the property. Um, and there were seven other tenants in there and they thought, you know, why not take the opportunity to get some additional income 
as well as a better trading premises for ourselves. Um, this was a bit of an interesting one in that the, the profits from the trading business didn't quite service the loan and neither did the rental income from the property. But actually when you combined the two, there was more than enough debt service. Um, the flexible approach from our underwriters meant that we could still consider this case as an owner occupied loan with the benefit of the additional income, despite the fact that again, this, this customer didn't have very much experience in commercial investment at all. So that is it for the case studies and the presentation. Uh, apologies, Tony, I think I have overrun slightly. Um, any initial inquiries, all of the, the, the details for specialists are on here. Um, they would be more than happy to talk you through our criteria or any specific case inquiries. Thank you. Jonathan, thank you. Great as always. Um, we've got one question from Dilip, which, um, Dilip, hi, I ho hope you're very well. Um, Dilip's been using us for quite some time now, mainly on the commercial side, uh, really enough. Um, he just asked, commercial investment rates, LTV, slide mentions on semi-commercial. Dilip, probably best if you go, go to the, uh, what I sent you over today, uh, rather than going back onto the slides, it actually shows the rate, where have I got it? Shows the commercial rates on section on the first page towards the bottom and then over the page is the semi-commercial rates it's probably the best best way to describe it rather than sort of like go back and, and cover stuff uh because I'm, I'm not sure what slide that was on um but yeah that just outlines exact on, on what i've sent you exactly what's available um Alec, I've, when was it you launched jonathan was it last it was september 2019. okay um... so and we came on board just as lockdown started. Uh, I've been absolutely, I mean, as you're probably aware, if you're in commercial finance, how badly it was hit uh, during lockdown. Um, but in that time, we've managed to get cases offered on restaurants, like Jonathan's already shown a couple of examples uh, that everybody else was saying, oh, no, not going to touch anything like that with a barge pole. Uh, but more recently, we've had a case now, I went and saw these clients um, because they're very local. They found us on Google uh, because they are very local to us, literally about about 12 minutes away i think it was from like door to door uh and they were looking to raise some money on a fairly large industrial site that they have um that is i think it works out about 11 percent loan to value 11 percent, 80 grand a year in rent and they were looking to borrow 200 grand and every lender we went to it was either all oh, don't like it too rural don't like it that the yard looks a bit messy just and you're thinking how could you lose on a deal like this i mean the, the clients themselves were multi multi-millionaires or still are multi multi-millionaires um it's all family money it's been going back to the 1800s what they've actually got they were once the largest producer of goldfish in the uk uh, supplying 15 million goldfish to fun fairs and circuses and all, all sorts of stuff um and literally everybody we approach no can't touch that not not one for us uh how can a lender lose on a deal like that seriously uh approach delica yeah we'll do that all day long absolutely so it's now proceeding with Alica. so uh I, I do know that Alica um do keep a very very tight control on their panel they don't go out to the whole of the market they're not an Aldermore, for example who literally have gone out to everybody and then suffered massive service issues as a result they what they try and keep it simple uh, they have packages in place such as ourselves so if you need access to the Alica product uh we're one of a few um you know what to do um no more questions actually nothing being tight so i'm going to ask you the questions you set yourself jonathan so here we go are you an online only bank um we're not so most of our offering to our depositors um is is online only um but the way the bank operates is is a, a, a chain of people like me around the country there's 12 of us um we have full uk coverage um except northern ireland um and yes it's, it's all done through individuals um but we do very much rely on on our, our panel introducers um to to be that outreach to uh individual brokers or, or direct customers for us okay second one how do you treat opco propco scenarios so this is cases where you've got two separate limited companies where one owns the property and another trades the business um, most lenders will look at these on a pure investment basis because the business you are lending to is not generating that profit. Um, we assess them both and we will lend based on the trading performance of the business. We don't care about market rent. Um, all we ask is that we, we take some sensible security over that trading business 
uh, to be able to secure the income, but then we will 100% rely on it and treat it like any other owner-occupied mortgage. Okay, and final one, what changes and enhancements are, um, are you looking at to make the, oh, sorry, what changes and enhancements are we are looking at to make in, I can't actually read for some reason at the moment, <laughs> what changes and enhancements we are looking at making to the product over the coming months? There you go, put it out a long last. Fantastic. Um, so we've just launched into Scotland, literally in the last few weeks, um, and last week launched our care home product. Um, over the next few months, we're starting to focus on uh, the big one for us is going to be trying to get a fixed rate product into the market early next year. Um, that's something we're hearing a lot of demand for. Um, and also revisiting our appetite to perhaps become a little bit more competitive, particularly on loan to values for semi-commercial property. Um, that's something where we, we perhaps have taken our eye off the ball a little bit and, uh, and, and been caught out by some of our competitors um, starting to really ramp up their LTVs. Um, and we feel that we're just not able to offer the same same range that we were. Um, so I think uh, the big changes for us, like I say, are gonna be appetite um, and trying to get a couple more product options out there just so there really is a, something for everybody. Okay, brilliant. So no more questions. Um, I've not got anything else to ask. So Jonathan, thank you as always. Absolutely Thank fantastic. You. Sorry about including somebody else's slide in yours. That was actually copied <laughs> over from your presentation, the initial presentation three months ago. I've no idea how that's got in there how at well. all. But, uh, I've removed it. So um, we'll speak to you soon. Uh, right, everyone, what we'll do oh. is just on 11.15. Um, Jonathan, um, Simon will exit you from the thing, so you don't need to do anything. We have uh, Patrick Doyle, who I think is better known as Paddy Doyle uh, from Lenco. Now, Lenco may be a lender you've not heard of before. Um, we was very fortunate. It was actually run by a guy who was formerly the CEO at Hampshire Trust Bank, uh, who I got to know very well at that time because we have been for quite some time HTB's largest introducer. So I, we were taken on by Lenko and just found to be a lender that was willing to do stuff, not just the stuff that others will do, they came out with the best rates, but some, some stuff that no one else would touch. Um, they're not out there to do stuff that's you know, you know, ridiculous. But they will do some stuff that you think, yeah, there's a deal there. But others are saying, no, sorry, it doesn't tick all the boxes. So you should have received this from us, which is their buy to underwriting criteria. Uh, they are also in the bridging market as well. But I think today is just basically on uh, buy to that. Uh, Paddy, you okay? You can you hear us? I can hear you fine, Tony. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, absolutely fine. Yeah, no problem. Not loud and clear. Nice. No, nothing in the background that's distracting. No stairs or Fantastic. kids running around, which is good. <laughs> um, or dogs barking at the postman, as we had recently <laughs> one, one, one from one of our presenters. So, uh, so okay, a little bit first of all about um, is it is all uh, we've not met before, have we? So it's okay to call well, you, no. Paddy. Okay, yeah. Paddy's fine. Paddy. Yeah. So, so there you go. So, so. Uh, Paddy's been with Lenko for six months, previously a BDM at Leeds Building Society from their head office. His route into financial mm -hmm. services has been a little bit different than most in the lending space, starting commercial risk and recovery. Love this. Commercial risk and recovery at Lloyd's before a hiatus in vascular science, performing ultrasound scans for the NHS. Outside the working world, Patrick is a keen sports person, athlete and questionable dancer. We're not going to ask him to dance in today's presentation. <laughs> Thanks, okay, I, and this next one, I absolutely love this because I did Google what's about to come up just to have a look because I was hoping they might be thinking it might have been an adult game, that it might have been some pictures. No, it wasn't. Um, Paddy once played in an F FA Cup game that reached national use due to six players and staff being sent off due to the colour of their underpants. Now, yeah. I Googled this because like I say, normally I like to put a photo up just to thought, like, add a little bit of humour to it, but I then found out it was an FA Youth Cup game. It was. I believe. Uh, and two 16-year-olds were forced to change their underpants at the side of the pitch, uh, which didn't go down too well with the FAO, I presume. <laughs> <laughs> Descended into chaos quite quickly, I think. Uh, on that did. You, and you lost 6-1 from what I saw as well. So, yeah, um, we did, yeah. Was, <laughs> honestly, so <laughs> referee probably worked for the FCA. That's, what, that, that's the last time I'm going to mention, of course. Um, okay, so that's me. That's the introductions done. Paddy, over to you. I'll see you in about 20 minutes. Uh, looking forward to hearing what you've got to say. So... Lovely. Thanks, Tony. Excellent. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Thanks, for Tony, for handing over there. Um, so, yeah, I'm here to talk about uh, Lendco, our proposition, uh, and how we support a specialist hub with, uh, as Tony said, the weird cases where you think there's a deal there, uh, and we tend to be the lender that finds a way to, to do it. So, 
Uh, a little bit about our story so far. Uh, so we launched uh, back in June of 2018 uh, with our first completion coming a few months after in September of 2018. Uh, prior to, to this, as Tony alluded to, we were actually born out of the SPF private clients group, um, which was established back in, well, after the rebrand in 2011. Uh, it was then determined that there was a, a gap in the market for, for what Lendco do, which is hopefully what I'm going to discuss with you today. Um, there's a bit of uh, information there about our timeline up until today, where we've just surpassed uh, £550 million worth of buy-to-let completions, uh, in addition to £100 million worth of bridging completions as well. Uh, but we'll stick on to the subject of the specialist buy-to-lets that we do today. Uh, our bridging uh, is about to go undergo a bit of a revamp. So uh, by the time I get through it, it may well have changed. Um, there's a little bit about uh, where we tend to sit in the market uh, below, just for reference. Uh, we're not quite as high up the risk curve of, as the likes of Shawbrook and HDB, uh, but somewhat similar to the likes of Kent Reliance, Fleet, those sorts of lenders. Uh, which leads us nicely on to, to what we can do, uh, what we do do regularly. Uh, so I've just included a bit of our buy select criteria highlights uh, and a little bit about what we can do. I'll also include a few examples as well. Uh, so what we tend to see is that we were actually targeted towards the uh, property professionals. So experienced landlords tends to be what we see. It doesn't stop us from doing first time landlords, uh, but more often than not, our applicant base are applicants with large portfolios, more than 10 properties usually, uh, where we undertake uh, a remortgage or uh, support them with purchases of uh, additional property. Um, that includes uh, private individuals uh, in personal names or limited company as well. Uh, and we can actually do up to six applicants per application, which has come in handy more often than I expected. Uh, in addition to the, the UK-based limited companies uh, and UK-based individuals that we can support, uh, we do also consider foreign nationals uh, and expats uh, based anywhere in the world. Um, when we're looking at expats, uh, they, they can be anywhere in the world as long as we can lend uh, in, in that country, so we won't lend in sanctioned countries for obvious reasons. Um, and we do have some set nationalities available, which broadly... Uh, consist of uh, countries in the European economic area, some in Southeast Asia, uh, North America, including Canada, recently added Israel, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand as well. Um, to give you a little bit of a flavour of the types of uh, foreign nationals that we tend to see, uh, we, uh, well, probably not one that we've uh, would be our usual, but this week we've agreed to do a, a remortgage for a French national uh, living in Mozambique. Um, they actually had uh, quite modest UK income. They only have about the equivalent of 30,000 sterling income. It does say there that we tend to ask for 75, but as a as a lender, uh, we we tend to uh, understand that 30,000 year UK income is uh, actually goes a lot further in other countries uh, than just the UK. Um, so we can also do self-employed foreign nationals and expats. We see these fairly rarely in truth, but we can accommodate them. Uh, and we tend to see that our uh, employed foreign nationals and expats are senior staff at recognized uh, international companies, usually based in the EU, US, um, or UK registered companies. Uh, and in terms of loan sizes that we can accommodate, uh, we can do loans up to three million pounds. Uh, we go up to 75% loan to value for loans up to 1.5 million. Uh, and then we're at a maximum of 65% for foreign nationals. Uh, and in terms of tenancies, we are purely AST and corporate tenancies for the moment. Uh, moving on to the types of properties that we tend to see. Uh, we uh, are accommodating of, of HMOs, multi-units and single unit buy-to-lets on our buy-to-let space. Um, for HMOs, we'll quite comfortably go up to 70% loan to value, can go even up to 75 for experienced HMO landlords, which we define as uh, applicants with two or more HMOs for at least two years. Uh, we do have a maximum number of eight beds on HMOs as well. 
so we weren't able to help with the the 24 bed HMO that I was recently asked about, unfortunately. Um, where we do differ on the multi units, however, uh, again, we can go up to 75% loan to value, but we've actually got no limit on the number of units within a block. Uh, so recently we completed on a block of student flats up in Nottingham, uh, where there was 36 flats in there. Uh, some of them were actually less than 30 square meters as well. But we're, as a, as a lender, we understand that uh, multi-unit freehold blocks are often kept that way because of the uh, mortgageability or lack of uh, mortgageability for, for flats under 30 square meters. So we can step through those transactions fairly, uh, fairly nicely. And in terms of uh, rental stress testing for uh, these assets, uh, we'll do uh, uh, stress tests on in line with what the PRA, PRA suggests. So 125% for basic rate taxpayers and limited company, 145% for higher rate taxpayers. And that's a pay rate for a five year fix. Um, in terms of stress testing the, the background portfolio, uh, we tend to like to see that applicants are no higher geared than 75% loan to value and we apply the same stress rate uh, as we do on the subject's uh, property uh, if we are only doing one out of a portfolio, which tends to be not a problem. Uh, so where do we uh, where do we differ from the likes of our competitors like Kent Reliance, uh, like Fleet Mortgages? Uh, well, we actually manually underwrite every single transaction that comes through. Uh, we're we're actually a relatively small team of around thirty two in total, uh, which includes uh, myself, my colleague uh, Graham, uh, and Alex, uh, who head up the sort of sales team, uh, and we've also got about eight. Uh, underwriters and eight uh, case managers as well, um, along with the sort of back staff and treasury. Uh, so we we do have the facility to manually underwrite every transaction, um, which gives us our uh, USP, if you like, of being able to do those deals that are slightly outside of criteria where they don't quite fit the box of other lenders. Um, and, uh, and we're able to step through those uh, performing you know, risk assessments and um, and so forth. Uh, and in terms of submitting cases, we're actually all online. Uh, so we've got an online portal uh, where we have uh, application forms assigned electronically by applicants and the same for offers as well. Uh, and everything can be uploaded. Uh, so it's fairly straightforward and easy to use. Um, and as I've mentioned, we've got a bit of a can-do uh, lending approach with, with some creative solutions uh, so uh, for, for those cases that don't quite fit the box for whatever reason, uh, we're able to, to step through those. Uh, underwriter and, and case manager access as well seems to be a bit of a dying art in, in some of the lender spaces. Um, but we actively promote um, brokers being able to, to use our, our underwriter's knowledge and our case manager's knowledge for things like case updates uh, if, if an underwriter is not around or, or vice versa. Uh, and our underwriters are quite open to the idea of discussing cases that have already come in uh, and saying how, what we need to do to in order to, to make them work. Um, and all of that within usually 32 calendar days from application to, to offer, which is uh, still reasonably quick when you're manually underwriting every transaction and, and having all of those discussions. Um, we also offer a limited distribution panel. So we're fairly young, as I mentioned, we uh, sort of started trading three years ago. It's been three years or so since our first completion. Um, to us, it's been really important that we actually offer good service or good quick service uh, to, the pa uh, to the brokers on our panel rather than going whole of market. Um, and being overrun and potentially harming our, our service. So at the moment we've got uh, a base of around 115 brokerage firms, giving us a, a sort of a panel of about 400 brokers to, to panel out to. Um, we don't actually deal with too many packages. Uh, most of them are sort of uh, direct brokers, um, but the packaging uh, business is is really a, a cornerstone of our of our distribution. So it's great to see. And just moving on to a few case studies, just to, uh, just to bring a few uh, few of the scenarios and examples of where we've uh, manually underwritten cases uh, to, to a bit more life. So uh, this is uh, 
uh, well, we believe it's converted pub. It was a it's a, presented to us as a 13 unit, multi-unit freehold block. And there's also commercial on the ground floor. The picture doesn't do it justice, but there is a Tesco Express uh, on the right hand side. Uh, value of uh, 4.6 million pounds. And the main sticking point with this one was that the applicants were um, were not keen on providing 100% guarantees, uh, which, we, which we usually ask for. Um, however, what we were able to do here is we were quite mindful of the fact that the rental coverage on the on the 65 percent loan that we did um it, it, it covered the the interest payments about 250 percent so we've used that to as a, as a bit of a mitigant if you like to to say whether we would need 100 percent personal guarantees from the applicants uh, so we've actually agreed to do this at 25 percent and, and has re uh, recently completed on this basis as well um, and they've also got a, a relatively large portfolio of about 40 properties in the background. So we can uh, we can also rely on their uh, background uh, income. Uh, and in terms of uh, one of the more ones that we see on, on a bit more of a day to day basis, really, um, these are three single unit uh, houses um, value about 550,000 each, all owned by the same uh, applicant uh, who had purchased them on a bridge uh, we were looking to term these uh, bridges out um, at 75 percent loan to value i think a few lenders or the broker had expressed concern around exposure as they are three houses in the same street i think there was only about four houses in the in the row um, but we were quite happy to step through this again the applicant was quite experienced so it gave us a little bit of comfort when um uh, when underwriting the case um, and we used our standard products uh, and we were able to, to get them off the, the bridge fairly quickly uh, at 75%. The Happy yeah, to... Thank you, thank you very much. I actually you. learned a couple of things in that that I didn't know previously, but then I don't deal day to day on the cases. So <laughs> uh, my, my team do that for me. But um, <laughs> no, thank you for that. We've got a couple of questions been asked uh, both. And then there's obviously a couple of questions that you've, you've uh, covered yourself so uh, first one this relates back to I think this was asked when you were covering the um, foreign nationals and expats how about foreign currency earnings yeah no really good question uh, thanks Stephen um, we're, we're quite comfortable with foreign currency earnings we we just tend to say it's got to be uh, usually an equivalent of 75,000 uh, pounds sterling but we're quite happy to step through uh, yeah, foreign currency earnings. Um, we, we also included in that £75,000, we tend to also look at the, the surplus or the net profit from the existing UK portfolio. Uh, so to give a little bit more of an example, we recently had, or this was only this week actually, we had a Cypriot national in Cyprus uh, who had uh, earnings of around €30,000 they also had uh, an existing UK uh, portfolio, which gave them around 55,000 uh, there or thereabouts uh, net profit uh, in their latest year. So we've gone, well, actually, yeah, 30,000 euros plus 55 will we'll easily be able to cover any rental voids or be able to solve any uh, property issues that, that may arise as a result of owning a portfolio. So quite happy to set through those sorts of uh, transactions. Okay, and Stephen, quite simply, if you get one of those, give us a call. If Lenko won't do it, then uh, I do have somebody that will. Um, but you probably find that Lenko will look at these very sympathetically, uh, these types of situations. And with a, because it's not a system-driven underwriting, it's, it's all manual underwriting, um, it's amazing sometimes what you can actually get through uh, if it's presented the, the correct way. Uh, Alex has asked, uh, can you lend to limited liability partnerships? Uh, yes, is the short answer. Yes. yes, we can. Okay, and Michael Ashcroft, hi Michael, hope you're well, has asked, some lenders require people living in Australia to have their documents signed outside Australia to meet Australian regulations. What is your situation? It's a good question. Thanks, Michael. Um, we we tend to say, for, so for all expats and foreign nationals, not just those in, in Australia, um, but we we're quite happy with documents being certified by a, a notary in their country or a solicitor uh, and then sent over to us. Um, we, we don't need them to travel over to the UK um, because we're all electronic. It's, it's often a lot easier for, for them to do it that way. So we're, we're quite happy to, to step through those. Um, just on the, just going back to a, a point that Tony alluded to there, 
um, about uh, cases being presented, what we tend to do at, at Lendco is uh, we we actually uh, get a chance to discuss with our credit team uh, every morning at sort of 10 o'clock. We'll have a chat about uh, bizarre or cases that don't quite fit the mold um, with with our credit team. Um, we'll have a discussion with those about the ones that have come in over the last 24 hours or so uh, to, to uh, so that we can present the case for for lender or for brokers rather, um, so that we can have a good discussion with our underwriters and, and figure out a, a, a practical way to move forward that satisfies our credit team and uh, and the broker and the ap applicant as the uh, the end user, if you like. So yeah, it's useful to note. Okay, on to your questions. Are you able to lend in consumer buy to let scenarios? Uh, yeah, yes, we're quite happy to lend on consumer buy to lets. We we tend to see them as uh, in, in let to buy scenario. So very recently we had uh, a let to buy scenario where they were actually a first time landlord. So consumer buy to let, they were moving out of their residence to go and live on uh, or purchase a property from a farmer that they worked for. And they were putting up a mobile home in their, in their back garden to, to live whilst they did refurbishments. But as everything's registered at, uh, at a new address or would be on the completion of our loan, we were quite happy to step through those as well. Okay, final question. What is the maximum number of properties a landlord can have in their portfolio with Lenco? Uh, infinite. Uh, so we've got no limit on the number of uh, properties either with us or in their portfolio. Uh, I, I'm happy to be corrected uh, by, by one of my seniors, but I think the, the largest one we've done is one with about 360 properties in total. Naturally, we didn't do all of them, um, but quite happy to, to step through those um those sorts of applicants uh, get an understanding of their portfolio. Um, we do also carry out uh, interviews with, with some applicants of certain loan sizes, uh, just to get a bit of an understanding of what their ambitions are for the next 12, 24 months and see what we can do to, to support them with that, just to make sure that we are doing uh, the right and sensible lending um, for them, so, so yes. Okay. Uh, Paddy, thank you very much. Lovely to meet you. Uh, hope you look forward to see, actually seeing you um, face to face when you can come into the office. Soon, yes. Uh, my IT team will um, exit you from being a presenter, so you can still watch if you want. Um, and that, that will happen anytime now. But thanks again. Uh, that was very informative. So we now have um, somebody who's not new to these shows at all, our, our web shows at all, um, but he's now in a different guise because uh, he was one of the many free transfers that took place during during COVID uh, last year. We won't mention anything about the previous one, but we have the ever smiling James Briggs, who I'm hoping is, I'm just going to check actually that he's he's with us. No, I can't see him at the moment. So I'll talk very slowly. Um, it's, oh, no, there he is. Marvellous. Okay. The, there he is. Can't really see him. It's a bit dark, um, but no, it should be okay. Oh, we've got some lights. A bit, a bit nearer the screen. Uh, it's got James Briggs from Together um, to get the Money. I think they'd, they'd like to be known. And everyone just together is fine. Thanks, Tony. Yeah, we can hear you. We can see you. Marvelous. Um, so you should, everyone, receive the personal finance uh, document via uh, on, on email this morning from me. Uh, just take a look at that when you can. I think it's 16 pages long, so I'm not going to expect you to be reading through the whole thing whilst James is presenting, but refer to it afterwards. Um, as we all know, together exited for a short while uh, last year during COVID, um, but are back with a bang. Uh, they really are. So uh, with some products, absolutely fabulous products. A little bit about James, first of all. Uh, he's worked, it, it, he's the Together Personal Finance Specialist Distribution Manager. Try getting that on a business card. Um, James has worked in specialist lending since the late 1990s at a variety of lenders and brokers and now manages national relationships with packager partners specialising in first and second charge regulated mortgages, consumer buy-to-let mortgages, regulated bridging. In addition to managing partner relationships, James works closely with the personal finance board at Together to ensure products remain competitive, relevant, and meet the needs of a growing number of clients who are underserved by traditional lenders. Very handy when you've got somebody of James experience within that particular area because uh, it really does help boards actually know what they should be offering. So and his interest, in fact, I did laugh at this one. Uh, James has an unusual collection of pets, which includes a ginger tomcat, a pig, and two donkeys. Now, I've got neighbours who own two donkeys. And by Christ, can those things make a lot of noise? They really can, especially when they, they let them out at five o'clock in the morning and they start braying at whatever. 
uh, it, they really can be quite noisy. So, James, it's over to you. You are still a little bit dark, by the way. Um, but yeah, you... I'm sorry about that. Um, right, no, that no, way... no, Maybe you're in a different time zone. Uh... I'm not quite sure what it is, but uh, uh, I'll over to you. I'll see you in about 20 minutes. Um, and good luck. Thank you very much, Tony. Uh, great to be here. Uh, apologies for the uh, the lack of light, guys. Uh, I've moved house recently, so I'm still trying to perfect this home studio. Uh, but believe me, you are not missing much, so don't worry. Uh, maybe the blind behind is having a bit of an impact. Let's just close those, shall we? There we go. Lovely. Okay, so yeah, we went to the we went to the animal sanctuary to get a cat, and we came back with a pig two donkeys and a cat so a lot of my uh, a lot of my friends and industry colleagues ask me uh, what we uh, what the donkeys have for lunch and I always reply an hour like everyone else so uh, that always gets a bit of a giggle from people uh, before I get into the presentation um, I will just say together has been on a journey over the last couple of years and um, central to the output of that was our relationships with packages so um, if you had any experience of working with Together before um, COVID, you'll know that there were, there were hundreds and hundreds of agencies um, and pretty much every broker was putting business into us in the whole country. Um, we streamlined the process and uh, simplified our distribution through packages only currently. Um, what that's allowed us to be is a lot more efficient as a lender and we've been able to pass on that efficiency in terms of some really competitively priced products. Um, to our broker partners and ultimately clients. So that's working really well. So our, our relationship with uh, with Tony's firm, who I've worked with for about 15 years now, and I will say they are excellent at what they do, is really important. And it's the route where you will access uh, together products, whether that be personal finance, which is what we're going to talk about today, or commercial finance. So that's me. Uh, give you a bit of information about Together to begin with. Uh, hopefully you've already heard of Together, but we've been around for 46 years now. We've got a loan book of uh, over 4 billion, approaching 5 billion quickly with the, with the engagement we've had this year, which is fantastic. 500 colleagues, um, nationwide support, but based out of Cheadle in Cheshire. And we pride ourselves in taking a common sense approach to lending. Uh, so that's our flexible criteria. None of the products are credit scored. And hopefully you'll see as we go through the next few slides how we can help some of those clients that fall out of um, high street criteria. Um, we're not here to compete with the, the, the high street. I'm proud of that. Um, yes, our pricing will be higher than what you'll see uh, with other lenders elsewhere. But we're really unlocking opportunities for those clients who um, fall outside of mainstream or, or even other specialist lenders criteria. The areas that we lend in is auction finance and bridging, which is particularly busy at the moment, uh, buy to let, which you've just been hearing about, commercial property, including land development, so ground up development for investors, uh, and residential lending, first and second charge lending, which is what we're going to talk about today. Um, I did a very similar presentation to this yesterday with a, a table um, full of advisors, and uh, we can't do it in this forum, but I asked people what their perception of Together was and where Together is useful in the in the product briefcase when it comes to being a mortgage advisor. And uh, most people said adverse, um, which is you know a fair response. You know, um, you know historically Together have been very active helping clients with some form of current or previous adverse credit. I will say it only takes up about twelve to fifteen percent of the cases that we write currently. So we, we're attracting a lot of cases for other reasons other than adverse. So it, if you think we're only useful for adverse, and hopefully this presentation will be um, beneficial to you. Okay, so quite a useful slide just to kind of put into context where we can help clients. So it's where there's a non-standard purchase. There's some issue with credit potentially in the past, albeit a minor slice of what we do. Um, non-standard income, the makeup of their income or the income calculations or something unusual about the security, something unusual about the property. Um, and where we really come into our own is where there's a combination of challenges on cases. So that could be, um, let's say, um, uh, a non-standard property, high-rise council property, uh, where the clients have got some adverse, or maybe they've got unusual income makeup, combination of benefits, pensions, and part-time work. 
So it can really help on those, uh, on those unusual and challenging cases. So let's unpack those four circles a little bit more. So we'll start off with um, the property challenges. So uh, we'll run through these. There's no minimum property value on any of our products. However, that is governed by a minimum loan size. So the minimum loan size on residential first charges is 50,000 and it's 30,000 on second charges. A um, really useful piece of the criteria is we have no minimum time in property. Okay, so if the clients have acquired a property, residential property recently, and their borrowing capability was limited by LTI, for example, with the high street, uh, and they want to carry out a refurbishment to the property, an extension, whatever, um, as long as they've owned that property for at least one month and the title is updated, then uh, we will lend to them. Um, that could be on a first or a second charge basis. Uh, we help with the non-standard properties, so that could be uh, timber frame, steel framed, um, steel roof, thatched roof, concrete construction, um, all of those different types of property uh, we can help with. Sometimes there'll be a reduction in LTV, uh, but Tony and his guys know our criteria inside out, so they'll be very, um, very capable to tell you quickly on day one what maximum loan to value you'll be looking at. See a, a lot of a right to buy still, so that's a big portion of what we do. More about that in a second. But we can lend on high rise, ex council, um, either on a residential or investment basis. I'm not too concerned at all about the deck access, which some lenders um, don't like, uh, and there's no requirement for a lift either. So, up to four stories for ex council properties, we can do our full loan to values. Um, when you get five and above, uh, we will still lend, but we do make an LTV restri restriction. Uh, we'll also lend to properties with no kitchen or bathroom. So we do see a lot of clients who um, own a property currently and start doing work themselves and uh, under forecast the cost of the works and end up buying a kitchen, taking the existing kitchen out uh, and not having the funds to fit it correctly uh, or you know, taking care of other work or other gremlins coming out as they're halfway through a renovation. Um, you would automatically think uh, that that would be a bridging loan if there's no kitchen or bathroom in the house, but on residential, um, as long as the funds that we're releasing to the client enables them to finish the property and it's going to be done in a sensible time frame, so no more than three months, we'll happily lend um, on that property on a resi basis. Even if they're not living in the property currently, typically um, clients have moved out, they're renting somewhere for a short period of time or moved in with family. We've got solutions there for those clients. Uh, we've talked about high rise. Um, you will occasionally see properties where the survey is not prepared to commit to evaluation at all. Um, so I can give you many examples of that, but typically uh, un unmortgageable stuff, um, maybe the location of the property or the condition of the block, if it's a flat, for example, um, we will still lend um, if, a, if the surveyor can give us a cash valuation on the property. Okay, reduced LTV, but definitely gives the clients an option uh, where pretty much no other lender in the UK will go. Uh, more than happy with semi-commercial properties. So typically that's flats and shops on one title. Um, people will always ask me at this point about fast food, um, taxi ranks, uh, things that operate in unsociable hours. We're absolutely comfortable with those. Um, we appreciate, you know, that's that's one of the areas of our criteria where we're considered and we are really competitive on those. Um, no uplift in um, rates and um, properties with land and agricultural restrictions. We will lend on those also. Uh, we don't cap LTVs on those because typically the valuer will take the fact that there's a restriction into account on the valuation figure. Okay, a uh, few points on purchase moving on. So shared ownership and right to buy. So it's an area that we that keeps us incredibly busy in our personal finance division. Um, we will lend a 100% of the client's share on shared ownership and right to buy. So helping those clients with uh, home ownership dreams that have maybe been um, council tenants or private tenants want to get onto the property ladder, don't have that deposit available, we can help them. Okay. And in combination with our flexibility on income sources, it works really, really well. We do literally thousands of those transactions a year. Uh, and that is a market that I think is definitely set to increase, particularly shared ownership. We'll look at gifted 
deposit transactions from family members up to our full LTV, which is 75%. And we can consider gifted equity transactions as well. Uh, so gifted equity from a family member up to 65%. Um, been doing a few cases recently where uh, tenants are purchasing from landlords and landlords are discounting down the purchase price. Um, we can do those transactions as well to 65% LTV. Um, so real niche. I'm not aware of any other lender that's offering that uh, gifted equity landlord tenant scenario in the UK. So I do bear that in mind for landlords who are potentially looking to downsize because of um, taxation changes or uh, the rental property would need significant refurbishment before marketing for sale. They've got a tenant in there currently who wants to buy then you know it's a big saving for for the uh, applicant and also for the tenant we will consider four applicants on one residential case and not all of them need to reside in the security property so if you're falling short on income then parents can potentially step in uh, and we can do a, a dual affordability calculation to make sure that the parents can afford their own residential and the ability to support children for example on a resi basis. We also have true interest only available on our residential. So when I say true, uh, there's no uh, minimum equity requirements and no uh, minimum uh, lending requirements or income requirements. And uh, the affordability is based purely on the interest only figure. So that can help a lot of clients. One caveat for that is we won't allow interest only where there's an element of debt consolidation. So that's not what our interest only products are intended for. Um, so just bear that in mind. We'll go up to 40 year term on mortgages, 30 years on seconds, and we can lend as well if the clients are going to be retiring at some point during the term, um, which is usually the case to be fair on a 40 year mortgage. And happy to say that uh, we, we now have a much wider variety of products. So when I joined together, uh, we had one mortgage product that was 6.99% um, because of the effic efficiencies and the changes that we've made to our model. Uh, we now have first mortgage products starting at three and a half percent. So we've made significant, significant price reductions um, and we're seeing a lot more business flowing as a result of that naturally. Uh, moving on to income. Now, this is probably out of the four where we win the most business. So some real key, uh, key USPs in this area. So we have no minimum income requirements like a lot of our peer lenders. Uh, but more importantly than that, we have no LTI restrictions. Um, so we run a real world affordability calculation on every residential case. So um, if the clients can afford it on an I&E basis, then if they're at six or seven or eight times income, that is not our concern. OK, so we win a lot of prime cases, a lot of high value cases, actually, uh, where the clients are high earners um, and want a, a large residential mortgage, but are at five or six times income and it's falling out of the mainstream criteria. So that's a key USP for us. We'll learn to applicants that have been self-employed for just 12 months, providing they've got an accountant. And if they've got an accountant and they're more than six months into their trading year, we will use a projected figure from the accountant as well. So another key piece of our criteria. Uh, if we think about the, the pain that um, self-employed people um, have been through throughout COVID, it's fair to say that they're probably going to have a stronger year this year as things start to recover and business returns to normal than they had in the previous year. Now, with most of the lenders in the market, their borrowing and affordability would be assessed on their most recent um, reported figures. But if we're more than six months in, and if their trading year is consistent with the tax year, then at this, from October onwards, we can use a forecasted figure from the accountant. Okay, And there's no restrictions on what that can, forecasted figure can be in comparison to the previous year. So their income may have increased by 50%. As long as there's a sensible rationale around that, we'll, we'll use 100% of that forecasted figure. So another really, really important USP. Um, most clients that we lend to in that area are prime, high loan values, successful people. 
that have just suffered a drop in income during COVID. And I think we can all relate to that. Uh, we have no minimum time in a position. So if the clients um, started a position recently, as long as they've got their first pay slip, we'll be happy to lend. Uh, and uh, as long what we would re require in that scenario is 12 months continuous employment. Okay, uh, And we are flexible about the professions that they've had in that 12 months. So it doesn't necessarily need to be in the same line of employment. So a lot of people may be changing profession uh, as a result of COVID. Probably a lot of people trying to be HGV drivers at the moment with what's gone on. Uh, that would be fine. As long as they've got that 12 months continuous employment, they've got the first place pay slip in a new role, we'll consider lending to them. Uh, and you'll see as we go down there, we're flexible about probationary periods. So that opens up those opportunities for clients. A uh, couple more points on this slide. Uh, we will use 100% of benefits income. Uh, we will use pretty much every benefit um, you could come up with, except for housing benefits. Um, we use all of the child-related benefits as well, but just be uh, question the clients on how they're going to make that income up when those benefits stop. So when those children hit uh, 18, it is now, um, and they lose that child tax credit or that child benefit, what are they going to do to make that income up? Because that's what our underwriters are going to be asking. So if you can go to Tony armed with that information up front, you get an even faster response. We use rental income when there's rental properties in the background. And we'll consider lending to clients on short term contracts and zero hour contracts as well. So I think, again, unfortunately, that will be an output of COVID. We'll probably see more zero hour contracts in the retail space. Uh, more than happy to consider lending to those clients, providing they've been doing it for at least six months. And moving on, uh, finally, to credit. So our roots are in helping those clients who've had some credit blips over the last uh, two, three years. Um, we have lots of products now that only look at the last 12 months when it comes to adverse. So anything over 12 months is ignored. Um, for our very best pricing, we allow one unit of adverse in the last three years. So client, clients that have had maybe one CCJ, one default, one mortgage arrear in the last three years maximum, they can access our Prime Plus products, which is where our best rates are. So uh, 3.59 on a first charge, 3.99 on a second charge. Uh, we'll help clients with a lot more recent adverse as well. So clients that have had problems within the last 12 months, uh, very recently as well. So we'll consider lending to clients who've had up to three demerits within the last 12 months. So a combination of mortgage arrears, CCJ default, two defaults, one CCJ, any combination. Um, when it comes to unsecured arrears, we're pretty relaxed about that. Um, if the clients are starting to miss payments on all of their unsecured accounts, our underwriters just need to make rationale that the lending that we do is going to stabilize the clients and put them in a better financial position, uh, which is what you guys would want as advisors anyway. Uh, just to reiterate as well, none of our products are credit scored. Um, so, and there's no behind the scenes credit scoring either. So what we publish on those residential guides that you guys have been sent prior to this presentation is what we will lend on. And we can also lend to clients who've maybe had payday loans, a uh, couple of payday loans in the last year maximum, um, no more than three or four over the last couple of years. But we could take, take a common sense approach on those type of cases. Okay, there it is, short but sweet. Hopefully that was useful and hopefully you can see that we're more than just an adverse credit lender or lender of last resort, which is a phrase that I hate. Um, just to reiterate, I have, I have worked very closely with Tony for 15 years now, Tony, something like that. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Through some highs and lows uh, yeah, in the market. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we really value the relationship with, with Tony and the team there. And they're a great home for your business. So uh, please do use them. James, we'll take some questions, I think. You said it was short and sweet, but I, I found that also incredibly informative. Um, I really did. I mean, it, in a nutshell, it just covered everything that together do on the sort of like the first charge, second, first and second charge resi, and the um, 
and, and the regulated side of the business. So absolutely excellent. Uh, someone's typing a question, but it's not come up yet. So I'm going to ask the ones uh, that you set yourself. Uh, what have Together done to support clients during COVID? Okay, yeah, uh, great question set by myself. Um, so I think the what we've got within the residential criteria actually lends itself to COVID recovery quite well already. Um, so the fact that we will lend to self-employed clients on a forecasted basis, so as their business is recovering, they can borrow now rather than waiting till next April or beyond. Um, we have no restrictions on self-employed people that have taken grants or bounce back loans. So I know some, some of our peer lenders are a little bit nervous about um, clients that have utilised those. Also, no minimum time in role is very good for people who've had to change um, professions uh, or change direction as well within the last 12 months. Um, so I think that those, those, those bits around utilising income and the affordability calculation um, where a client might need to remortgage a property, but their income's dropped, so they're at seven times income. You know, it, it, frees, it frees mortgage prisoners up, basically. So, um, yeah, and, and we've been we've had plaudits about how we've managed our book as well throughout COVID, because um, there was a point where we had 15% of our entire book in payment holiday, um, which is extremely challenging for a non-bank lender which we are the biggest non-bank lender in the uk um that is down that is down to less than one percent now so really proud of how the, the guys in the office have managed the back book and taking care of those clients during a really difficult period okay incredibly difficult uh mike heard as well the question what is the minimum length of lease you will consider on residential it's 50 years plus the loan term so quite low actually okay excellent uh, there's a couple it's of things a bit higher than that in our commercial lending, I will say, Tony. Yep. So sorry to cut across you. If it's interest only and it's a buy to let or a bridge on a non regulated property, we look for 99 years plus the loan term. Okay. Uh, the second one that you set yourself, which is what do you together believe will be the growth areas in 2022? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I alluded to it a little bit in the presentation, but shared ownership is, is huge for us at the moment. And I think if you look at the, the you know the affordable homes program that the government have set out, I think that's only set to grow. So I, th I think there's about 180,000 shared ownership properties in the UK at the moment. Uh, they're going to be adding at least another 50% to that over the next three years. So uh, they, they've targeted themselves for I think 90 to 100,000 new shared ownership properties in the UK. But, yeah, when I when I speak to people that, that they find out I'm in financial services, and you quite often say, oh, "Yeah, I'm looking to buy a property." And you find, find out what their income is. I was talking to a delivery guy last week, an Amazon delivery guy, funnily enough, and he's saying, "What do you do?" I do. I'm involved with financial services. I'm looking for a mortgage. Uh, Can I get a mortgage? Tells me what his income is. Tells me what he's looking to purchase. Well, you're gonna have to go shared ownership because you're, you're nowhere mm. near, unfortunately. Um, mm. And what shared ownership was his answer to that? So. <laughs> Um, many people aren't even aware of what the, the product is actually out there. So um, I think that's probably the, the only other thing I was going to say. I'm just going to re-emphasize something. You did mention it in, in, in what you in, in your presentation, but lack of, there's no income multiple. So there's no four, four and a half times income, no six times income, none of that nonsense, yeah. uh, which I think is absolutely fantastic because it just opens up the lending market for so many more people. Of course, it's down to affordability. Um, but how many clients have you got? I mean, my daughter at the moment, for example, is paying £1,250 a month in rent every month. Uh, she cannot get a mortgage because her and her husband don't quite hit the the minimum when it comes to well, because of where they're looking to buy as well, because the properties are more expensive. They yeah. don't qualify under the four and a half or six times income. So to me, a lender that's actually got something of this nature, this this is something that we could all be writing buckets of, absolute buckets. So, 100%, 100 yeah they, they, these are good clients yeah that are, that are just not being serviced by the high street yeah good clients and i haven't now, missed a rental payment for my daughter's example yeah. i haven't missed a rental payment in 11 years since she started yeah. renting yeah uh, but can't get them all now we've got now we've got the more competitive rates as well they're a lot easier to convert exactly you know? they're, 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 they're difficult to sell at 6.99 i admit yeah. that the rates now are, when together came out with these new rates i'm like my, my jaw almost it almost hit the desk because it was 
Well, I was just thinking, blimey, that really does open up so many. So did some of our finance guys, Tony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, there's a couple of things there which I'll probably cover. So um, I've been asked, can we get the presenter's contact details? You can do, but they'll probably just refer you back to us. I'm hoping they would, uh, because yeah. all of them have got restricted panels. Um, and Paul's asked, can we get business cards? I'd have to see them to get business cards, Paul. So, but uh, let, let's see what we can sort out. Um, Alex, could you just mention what your surname is? Because we've got about four Alexes registered today, and I'm not sure which one you are. So, uh, if you could just let, let me have that, and I'll be in contact afterwards. James, as ever, thank you very much. Good to see you uh, once again. Um, sorry, I missed you yesterday at the BNC Awards, but I wasn't invited. And then I won't be to find out why I wasn't invited uh, because of my <laughs> love of the awards, of, of awards dues in in the financial services. Anyway, so there will be a short break now because, as I mentioned earlier on, James, uh, my team will, will take take you out of the event as a presenter. You can watch the rest if you want, but no heckling. Uh, there will be a short pause because we do recall all of these, and my team have asked me to shut up for 10 seconds uh, just so they can edit them because all these will be available on our website afterwards. If you want to watch any of these again, everything will be available to you. James, thank you very much. See you soon. Take care.